Hi guys, so today's video is going to be a list of books that I overhyped for myself. So it's not a list of books that I overhype in general, because if that was the case, it would be just all my favorite books. These are books that I, and I think we've all done this before, we're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna love this book. It's gonna be amazing. And then we pick it up and we're like, I didn't love this book. It's kind of basically a video where I'm talking about books that I was disappointed with, but I'm very aware that this disappointment isn't really on these books. It's on me for setting my my expectations of what they were gonna be in a place that they just pretty much were never gonna be able to meet. Kicking off this list would be The Last Argument of Kings by Joe Abercrombie. This is the third book in the First Law trilogy, and it's a trilogy that I greatly enjoyed, primarily because of the character work in this series. I thought the character work was amazing, second to none, it was so good. And I'm not a huge fan of the grimdark genre, but everybody talks about how this series is the perfect grimdark series. And I have to agree from the little grimdark I've read, this one stands out to me. It's the right level of grim. And I just didn't find that this conclusion was what I was wanting. It's such a character driven story that once you get to the end, the plot to me, it just felt like we could have kept going with it. I actually think the series could have been longer than three books. There were so many things about the plot that I felt were kind of, it's not that they were unanswered, but they just opened so many doors and then those doors like kind of closed, but not really. Next up, we have the book Starsight by Brandon Sanderson. This is the sequel to Skyward. This is definitely a case of this just wasn't gonna live up to the hype that I had in my head because I went into Skyward, which is a young adult science fiction story, kind of tentative because I had only ever read Sanderson's adult books and I wasn't sure if I was gonna love Skyward. And on top of that, I tend to like fantasy more than sci-fi. And on top of that, when I first started the story, it felt very young, like the young end of young adult, which sometimes I can really enjoy that and sometimes it can be a big miss for me. So there were so many things going into the first one that made it so that it was kind of an underdog. And when I got to the end, I was like, wow, that was a great book. And I just loved it and adored it. And I was expecting to feel the same with this one, which was stupid because I'm, I had these expectations after having finished the first one, but I started the first one with different expectations. And so it just wasn't ever gonna live up to the hype. There were also just some things in this book that were similar to the first book, but I just liked how they were done in the first book a lot more. For example, the relationship building and the camaraderie and the teamwork that we see in the first one is so good. And in the second one, I just, I definitely think it kind of took a back seat because world building was way more prevalent, I would say, in this one than it was in the first one. And you know what? It, I think, is necessary for the series, but I liked the first one a lot more. I'm a much more character-driven reader, and I love world building, but for me, I'm gonna always take really good character work over world building. Next on this list would be Uprooted by Naomi Novik. And this poor book, it just didn't have a shot <laughs> because I had such high expectations going in. I tend to read series, and series tend to be what fantasy has a lot of. I love fantasy. So I was so excited for this fantasy standalone, and I'd heard really good things. Even when I bought the book, the bookseller's like, oh my gosh, this is like my favorite book. So I was so ready to love this, and I didn't love it at all, basically. It was a lot of what I don't care for in fantasy, and that's okay. But the magic is super magical in that a big part of this story is that our main character is kind of showing the traditional magic users that there are other ways to do magic. But because of this, the setup is very like, oh, just magic can just happen. And so that made a lot of things feel very convenient to me. And I also felt like this story could have been a series of short stories following our main character because of how random sometimes it felt like the plot was we would be here and then all of a sudden we'd be over here and i'm like oh is this where we're going it did that a lot and i think if it had just been a collection of short stories then it would have in my brain totally been fine but because it wasn't it just felt so meandering ultimately we had an end goal but i just had heard a certain explanation of what this book was. And then when I read it, it didn't feel like that's what I got. Next up, we have Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This story follows a young boy who pretty much has no control over his life. It's actually very tragic and he gets 
very sad. But this main character is a young boy in this first book, and it is an adult fantasy story. And the writing is, I would say, closer to classic fantasy. It's slightly more formal. But that is kind of strange for me when our protagonist is so young, because then I feel this sense of a detachment from him. And I don't want this sense of detachment because I feel like this story, part of what makes it so loved by so many people, is the relationship the reader feels to Fitz, our main character. But I feel like it's very difficult to have an adult fantasy book from a really young protagonist. I just don't feel like when the writing style is more formal, I don't really feel like I'm in the character's head really, even if it's third person point of view, because you can do third person deep. And third person deep is kind of like first person because you feel so connected to the character and the narrative matches the character. And for me, that's I think what it was with this one is that the narrative didn't really feel like it matched a young boy. I also just found in the story that some of the things that I was looking forward to seeing and being shown were very glossed over. So he's being trained to become an assassin hence the title Assassin's Apprentice. And there are moments where he goes out and does stuff that they're like, and then Fitz did this. And it's like a paragraph to kind of sum up a bunch of stuff he did. And I was like, but that sounded interesting to me. What I was expecting when you say Assassin's Apprentice and when I hear that this is gonna be a deeply emotional story just wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. Next up, I think we have the ultimate, I just overhyped this book in my mind. And that would be, Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. This, I cannot tell you how excited I was for this. And on top of that, I am now really excited for the fourth book in the series, and I so hope that I don't overhype it again. But this book was not going to live up to my expectations, which is so unfair. I will say, thinking through my personal feelings about all three of the books out so far in Stormlight Archive, it is still my least favorite. But I think part of that is just because I loved the first two books, and I didn't love this book as much as I loved the first two books, but I expected to think it was like even better than the other ones, especially after how so many things transpired in the first two books. They're just, so many things are so good. But this one for me, there was a few times the pacing was kind of strange and there were certain elements of it that felt like they had to happen in this book in order for things to work in the next installments. And they didn't feel organic. They kind of felt like, well, we have to put these characters here right now because later things will happen, which I don't even know if that's true. Maybe it's not, but that's kind of how it felt. There's also some stuff I can't get into because of spoilers, but I do have a Stormlight Archive recap. If you guys are interested in watching that, I get into spoilers in that. I also use lots of memes. Next up, we have the book Iron Gold by Pierce Brown. Oh man, this one was such a bummer for me that I didn't love it because I really enjoyed the original trilogy and I was so excited for this one. I even went to an event, like a release party, and I got to meet Pierce Brown, which was super cool, and I didn't like the book. And I think it's because I know I rarely like continuations of series. Once I get my ending, I'm like, that's the end of the book. And if you explore other characters in the world later on, I can get on board with that. I rarely like revisiting characters that I already am like, their story's done. I just, you know, I'm just a big baby because I'm like, why are you doing this to my characters? Why are you making them do this? I don't like what they're doing, stop it. The next two books are books that I just read recently. One of them would be The Lies of Locke Lamora. And I thought this was gonna be a new favorite because a lot of you have quite similar tastes to me and you were like, this book's amazing, it's so good. And I was like, I really trust your guys' opinions and I was really pumped and I didn't, like it at all, at all. I didn't like this book. And it's not because I think it's a bad book. I just feel like the tone of the book didn't really work for me. And there's a lot of stuff with flashbacks. And obviously I talked about Stormlight Archive earlier. I'm not opposed to flashbacks, but I didn't like the way in which the flashbacks were done at times in this story, especially later on in the book. And I just didn't like any of the characters. I didn't really like the main characters. I actually found some of the side characters really interesting but I, I didn't really like any of our main characters, so it all completely came down to personal taste for me. The next book that I finished recently was All the Light We Cannot See. This is a historical fiction story set during World War II. It's a dual perspective, and I really want to stop and say that this is a great book that I just didn't really like because I loved the beginning, and so often when I really love the beginning of a book, 
I am like, this is going to be a new favorite. Oh my gosh, it's going to be like the top favorite. I can't wait to recommend it. And then the last half, the I didn't love the ending, so that's part of it. But the biggest thing, and I have a review talking about this, the biggest thing is that there's almost a sense of magical realism in this book that I was not thinking was going to be a thing. And it played a, it kind of, at the beginning, I was like, oh, this is going to be symbolic of some things in the book. And it is, and I like good symbolism. I think it opens up discussion. And I think all that's really fascinating to explore. But it played quite a big role in the book. And I wasn't um in love with that element of the book. It has to do with a diamond. When I read fantasy, give me all the fantasy stuff. But when I'm reading historical fiction, I don't want even a trace of it. And that's really what it came down to. It's a great book, though. <laughs> I really feel the need to say it's a really good book. I don't know why I didn't hold that book up while I talked about it, because I own it. The last two books would be The Queen of Nothing and Soul of the Sword. Queen of Nothing is the conclusion to the Cruel Prince series, which I have kind of a love-hate relationship with. I didn't love the first one, but the second one, the scheming in that book is really fun. I really loved the scheming in that second one. And I just the court intrigue and the setup for the story is that we follow a mortal girl living among immortal fae. And the fae can't lie, but she can. But because they can't lie, they are constantly wording things in ways that they could be sort of kind of leading you to believe something. Or they'll say something that's true, but it was true for something that happened five years ago. But now you're thinking it's true for present day. So I really enjoyed that element of the story. And I just, oh, that second one, I ate it up. And this third one, when I got it, I was like, oh wow, it's pretty short. And then things just wrapped up pretty fast. It was way, I don't really want to mention how, whether it was happy or sad in the end, but it just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And so for an ending, I was just like, oh, all right. A lot of people loved the ending though. They thought it was so good. But the thing that makes me like that series as much as I have this back and forth relationship with it is just the scheming. I loved the scheming. There wasn't a lot of scheming in that in that third book. And then Soul of the Sword, I enjoyed, but there the first one is Shadow of the Fox. It's a really fun story if you like anime and you like some of the more traditional tropes that you see in anime, especially the kind that have to do with samurais and everything. I think you'll like this series. It's a traveling story. It feels very episodic. And I thought it was a lot of fun. And in the second one, we sort of kind of have the absence of something from the first book. And I missed that thing. I missed that thing a lot. I think that that was part of what made the first book so good. And then I thought that the absence wouldn't last so long in this book, but it did. And I just kept waiting and waiting and waiting. That's all I can really say because I don't want to spoil it for anybody. But it is the second book. The third one's coming out soon. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I just think this was a little case of almost like middle book syndrome. It had to happen the way it happened. Let me know what are some books that you know were never going to meet your expectations because you just hyped them up too much. Let me know if you felt similarly or completely different on any of the books I mentioned. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys later.